Hi folks, my name is Zahira and welcome back to my channel. Or if this is the first time that you have joined me, welcome. I am thrilled to see another finger symbol enthusiast here. Today we're having another installment in my Zill review series where I review new finger symbols that I have purchased so that you can benefit from what I think and hopefully help you to make an educated decision when you buy new finger symbols in the future. I am thrilled that you are here and that you are a finger symbol fan just like I am. I am a self-professed finger symbol junkie. I absolutely love the finger symbols. I love playing them. I love collecting them. And you can benefit from my obsession here. So watch on and I am going to detail for you what I think of the Soroyan Arabesque 2. My name is Sahira and I'm here to teach you the beautiful art of belly dance. I have new finger symbols. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It's actually been quite a while since I've gotten a brand new pair of symbols. Um, I don't know why, <laughs> but I have a new set that I would love to review for you today. Actually, I have to thank my dear friend, Zamira. She was the assistant director of my tribal troupe, Urban Hipsy, for many years. We are still close friends. And the last time I saw her, she gifted me these symbols because she no longer uses them. And I am so so very grateful. Uh, these are the Soroyan Arabesque Twos. Let me see if I can give you a, a close-up look of these beauties. These are in German silver, and they are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I grabbed information from the Soroyan website. It says that the design depicts Arabic script surrounded by an arch ornament from the mosque of Ahmed ibn Tulun of the ninth century. So what's really cool, like all of these Soroyan symbols are really beautiful, but if you talk to the folks over at Soroyan, if you talk to Virginia and Vince, they have information from Harry when they bought the company from him, like as to, you know, why this design, right? Every single design was created for a particular reason. Uh, and so it's kind of cool. I didn't actually realize like where this design had come from. So it makes it a little bit more special when you know. These are what I would personally consider sort of a medium sized symbol. They actually are the exact same size as my Tuts uh, from Soroyan, which I actually also really enjoy, but they are smaller than my absolute favorite, the Afghanis, which I would consider a larger symbol. So these are a good kind of middle of the road. Maybe you're looking for something, you're, you're moving up from a smaller student size symbol and you want something with a little bit more heft, but not quite as big as a, a full pro size symbol. These are great. Here's a fun little tip before we even go into like how they feel and what they sound like. This is something that Zamira did. I am lucky enough to inherit the elastic that she had put into her symbols. Let me show you, if you can see here, these elastics, uh, number one, are you know nice and thick braided elastic, but the elastic she put in, it's kind of hard to see the, um, the slot for where the elastic goes, but these elastics are wider than the slot by just a little bit, which means when she put them in, she had to kind of squeeze it down there. Can you see how it gets pinched down at the bottom? She had to squeeze it down there to shove it in there and then sew it on the underside right, which works just great as long as you cut those tabs as short as possible. I was kind of surprised when I saw this. I have never tried to put a larger elastic into a slot. The control on these puppies is fantastic. I absolutely love how this extra wide elastic feels when I put them on and when I play, and I will absolutely, next time I change elastics on any of my symbols, I am going to get this kind of elastic in a slightly larger size. I believe that the majority of Symbols that I own have a quarter inch wide elastic, but if you could look on the Soroyan website, it'll actually tell you um, which elastic is used for which kind of finger symbols if you're trying to replace. But now I really think I'm sold on the idea of making the elastic a little bit wider, especially if you're looking for fine control. So definitely check out that idea. Okay, so now let's talk about what I think about the symbols. I think that they are gorgeous, right? I think that I really love the design on them. I love the, you know, Soroyan's written on them. I love all of the motifs and whatnot. I really like this shape of, um, of Zill. It has a not so deep bell, right? This top part is the bell. Like if you were gonna compare it to something like my Gawazis that have a much rounder bell, this has a steeper, more sloped bell, which I actually think I prefer. And it has a nice wide rim. So this edge from the, from the bell all to the end has a nice wide rim, which I am also a huge fan of because it gives like a nice connection to the finger symbols when you play them. Um, some symbols have a slightly thinner rim or a bit rounder. Uh, and the way they connect is a different, the way they sound is different. It's neither better nor worse. It's just personal preference. But I do enjoy symbols that have a nice, 
uh, long ridge on the side, a long rim, so that I get really nice connection and can really play a lot with the sounds. Um, according to the website, these are two and a half inch in diameter, and they also weigh 180 grams or 6.4 ounces. They feel to me for their size to like, have a nice heft to them. They're the exact same size and the exact same weight as the Tuts. So I feel like most of the symbols of this size would be approximately the same weight, except for maybe the Grecians are actually fairly thin and much more lightweight. So if heaviness is an issue that you have with symbols and you feel like something like this or the Tuts is a little bit too heavy, but you wanted to do something that is a little bit larger, I would definitely recommend checking out the Grecians because they're incredibly lightweight for the size that they are. Okay. So we've talked about kind of how they feel, the way that they're shaped, the awesome wide elastic. Let me play some sounds for you. Here is the Sororian Arabesque 2 basic tone. They're still great. They're still great. I don't know if you can hear it, uh, if my audio picks it up, but they just, they stopped ringing, right? So they have a really nice tone. They are silver. So a lot of the silver zills are um, a little bit higher in tone than the brass. I actually own more brass than silver because I do like sort of the, the lower, more mellow pitch. But what's beautiful about the Saroyans is that the folks over at Saroyan Mastercrafts actually tone match all of their zills. So once they've made a huge batch of Saroyan arabesque chews, they go and they like <laughs> clink them all together and they actually use like a meter that will tell them what the tone of the zill is. And they put four together that are identical or as close to identical as possible. Silver is harder to match than the brass. So they really like take their time making sure that these match, which for some people it doesn't matter. And if it doesn't matter to you, great. It matters a lot to me as a musician when I have finger symbols that don't play the same note. When I play them, I hear like a whoa, 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 which is sort of annoying. And at, at the worst, sometimes if the map pitches are completely different because some companies don't pitch match their symbols, um, it sounds a little cacophonous like an ambulance driving by or something. So these are nice. The pitches are nice and matched. Here's your clack. This is where that wide rim becomes really important and really fun because you can like, you can get a lot of good grip out of that wide rim. Also, if you'd like to play a, um, like a dirtier basic, I heard this term for the very first time um, from Drake and he was saying that like, if you play a basic slightly offset, which is the way I play, it's a cleaner tone. But if you play the basic totally flush, you get a little bit of a dirtier basic because the rims make a little bit more quack together before you play. So because these have nice wide rims, you can get a really nice dirty basic if you like dirty basics, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so dirty basic. Please. Hear the difference? Yeah, so we've got our basic, our dirty basic, our clack. How about tick? Because the size of these symbols, right, since they're a medium-sized symbol, creating the tick is nice and easy. With very small zills, you cannot uh, angle the thumb and get it to touch your hand easily. So the medium and the larger zills are better for multi-tonal playing, I find. So you bring it in. So I'm testing it. Because this has a fairly shallow bell, you have to be really good about making sure that this elastic is cut super small or that you put the tab up on the top because this elastic I didn't cut quite small enough and it sometimes mutes my tick because that rim ends up right on that elastic. Yeah, I get some mutes sometimes. So you know, if you have a, a pair of cymbals and you don't want to re-sew the elastics or maybe the bell is just too wide to create a tick that way. The Grecians are that way. The bell is so, so open and not very sloped that the tick doesn't work because it always hits the elastic. You can always create that tick by bringing the thumb towards the pinky finger and get that tick. So these have a good tick sound, a nice ring, right? So unmuting the zills. Oh, I really like the ring. It's really clean. Ooh, yeah, a really nice ring. Um, here, if you wanted to play a little bit further, we could talk about the top, right? We have the tick, 
put the thumb on top, talk. You might not be able to hear the difference because of the quality of the audio. But you hear it in person, the talk has a, a lower, a little bit more resonant sound. Yeah, so these have really nice tone, really great ring. They have good resonance, which means that it has, let's see if I remember what I have learned from the fabulous Dawn Divine. I think that means that it has a good amount of copper content so that it rings nicely. Don't quote me, but I believe that's what that means. Um, and I like the size of them. They're easy to play because they're not too, too big. And I per personally don't like to play really small zills. So these are a really good medium size. Um, and yay for that thick elastic. That really makes a huge difference. So... Now that I've kind of told you how I feel about all of the, uh, the elements of these symbols, I'm just going to jam out and play a little acapella so that you can hear what they sound like in action. Fabulous Zill fans, that is my review of the Saroyan Arabesque Twos in German Silver. I am a big fan. I have to admit, I think they have weaseled their way into my top five Zills in my collection now. So I'm thrilled to have them. Let's see if I had to then tell you what my top five are. The Afghanis, the Afghanis in brass are always my favorite. So those, my tuts, I have them in brass as well. Those are fantastic. I play them all the time. My Gawazis in bronze, because they're my only bronze set, and they are so beautiful. Now these Saroyan uh, Arabesque twos. I've got all of those. What would be my fifth one? Would probably honestly be my Afghanis in silver, because I love those Afghanis so much. Or my Altajas, which I don't use as often because they are huge, and they kind of pinch my hand a little bit because I have tiny hands, but the sound of those zills and the resonance that they have are unmatched by any other. So I'm curious what you thought of these arabesque twos. Curious if you might add them to your collection. Um, also curious, what are your favorite symbols in your collection? Let me know in the comments below, because if I don't have them, then I'll need to go out and get them. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you have a fabulous day, and I look forward to making music with you very soon.